Thank you, Pam. Good morning. Welcome to Daily Chapel. We are blessed by your presence. I am Pastor Babette, University Pastor. I serve alongside uh, University Pastor Justin Linares. Uh, we're your University Pastors. Today, we um, it's one of our great pleasures when we get to invite into the pulpit one of our seniors who uh, will share a really good word with us, Okuba Garusa. Uh, be careful, you might wanna put your sunglasses on because her light shines, you can't get away from it. And so as we invite her up, uh, we ask that you prepare your hearts to hear a really good word. Um, we celebrate her, uh, and I admit I'm missing her already. But we thank God for her light and her presence. And so let's center our hearts as we invoke the presence of God, all-inclusive God, creator, Christ, and comforter, we invoke your presence. We gather in your rich and matchless name to hear a good word from a Cuba about how great and faithful you are. Be present with us and let the words of her mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. Oh Lord God, our strength and our redeemer. And together the church says, amen. Come on, Cuba. Hello, everyone. I am Okuba, as said previously. I am a senior here at Hope, uh, excuse me, here at <laughs> Augsburg. I am blessed to be here. Thank you to Campus Ministry. Thank you to Pastor Babette. Thank you, Mr. Gillespie. Thank you, my family, friends. Thank you who are watching. Um, I pray that the spirit of the Lord just shines upon all of you and that this blessing is also not received for me, but is also spread to you. Um, and so as I dive into the word today, um, we're gonna look into uh, First Peter's, I believe I can take this off. <laughs> We're going to dive into 1 Peter's, chapter 1, verses 24 to 25, and it says, I will read in Jesus' name, for all flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That word is the good news that was announced to you. I'm going to read it one more time. All flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. But the word of the Lord remains forever. That's the, that's the key point I want to focus on. My title for today is God's Promises Remains Faithful at all times, during all times, in all times, and as I, as a student, um, from my previous experiences going from high school to the new journey to undergrad and then now to postgrad undergrad. And so this is a huge blessing. And um, as a student at Hope Academy in high school, um, I, didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know what God's promises were for my life. I didn't know where God wanted to take me. I didn't know what his, his vision was for me. And as a student, you know, ideally you wanna, you wanna have a dream, you know, you have a passion. Some people have the passion of medical school. Some people have the passion of being a lawyer. And as for me, I, I, had, I had like interest, I had hobbies, <laughs> but I didn't know what the promises of God were for me. I didn't know what or how or why he created me, what purpose he had for me. But ultimately I did believe and trust that he had a plan and a purpose for my life. Yet I didn't know, but I still believed. I still believed that God had ordained, had promised me something and I may not see it and I may still not see it. I may still not know it and I still don't know it. <laughs> But I do trust and believe that his promises are unfailing and that his promises are unending. His promises will always be faithful. And 
I particularly remember, um, I'm going to, I'm going to bring it back to my first year of Augsburg, actually. I, truth be told, I had no interest. I was like, oh my word, you know, like it's the, the high school that I came from, it was a very, like we prayed a lot. We, every class that we started, every class that we ended, every, um, it was, it was just very a biblical and a spiritual environment. And so coming here, I thought it was somewhat similar. And so I just compared. <laughs> and, and then I, thankfully, I knew there was at least a chapel service. And so I was, I was just, it was just truly blessing. And knowing that um, coming here, ideally, this, this was one of my top choices coming to Augsburg. However, I was also, um, accepted to Hamlin, Hamlin University. And so that was my first decision. Um, but by God's grace, by God's miracles, I am here today. And I'm truly blessed. Um, my four years here at Augsburg, honestly, it was it was just a life-changing experience. I met new people. I met Pastor Babette. Um, I was so involved. I was in, in, in certain levels, I was involved in the campus ministry, knowing that I participated in the Augsburg Youth Institute Theology um, in 2018, and that was just a huge, huge blessing. Um, and, and just being in this uh, spiritual environment, knowing that there are people like you, there are believers amongst you that will step beside you. And I was just so grateful. I'm truly grateful to this day, um, knowing that God's again, God's promises were just never failing and that he surrounded me with encouraging people. He surrounded me with people that looked like me, that were believers of Christ. And again, just going back, um, going forward, you know, I just, I trust and believe that God's promises will just still continue to be fulfilling, continue to be faithful. Um, and I want to bring it back just to say that um, comparing it to, it says, all flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower fades. So when we look at, like, well, this is an analogy right here. This is a beautiful example how he, like, gives us an already an, an, an example of what it looks like to, you know, comparing it to some things that can change. Seasons change. People change. Mood changes. Um you know, feelings can change. You know, you could be happy one time and you could be sad tomorrow. Um, you know, outfits change. <laughs> Days change. You know, Monday wasn't Tuesday. Tuesday isn't Sunday, you know. Um, time changes. Life changes. Family changes. Friends change. But guess what stays the same is the word of God. You know, if God, God the, the beautiful thing about the Lord and that his, his speech and his communications, whatever he says, it will come to pass. It will come to pass no matter the time, no matter the day. I mean, our hearts, are we, are we patient enough to wait? <laughs> are we patient enough to say, oh, wait, all right, Lord, I obey and I will follow and I will believe and I will continue to seek what you have promised for my life. And, um, as people like us, you know, we, we, can, we, can, we can be desperate. We can be desperate for answers. We can be desperate for prayer requests to be answered. We can be desperate. Lord, you have promised me. You know, we can ask so many questions. We can get frustrated. We can be upset. But no matter what, our moods may change. But he's probably looking down at us saying, my child, don't worry. I'm still going to get you there. I'm still going to, I will provide every need, every source, every want that you, uh, that you need at the right time, on the right day. And so, you know, in order sometimes, you know, in order for God's blessings not to happen, Satan ultimately, you know, gets in the way. And so that he, he tries to block our blessings, you know, he tries to trap us, you know, into, into a realm where we can't trust God, where we can't believe in God. But that's where the Holy Spirit comes and invites us. That's where the Holy Spirit comes and takes power. That's where the Holy Spirit leads and reminds us that, no, wake up, wake up. God is still faithful. God's promises will, no matter what age, we get to a certain age. <laughs> I have a grandmother that lives with me at my house, in my household. And to this very day, you know, to this very day, she has children, she has grandchildren. And to this very day, you know, God, she has a lot of promises that God has promised her. She's blessed, she's healthy. 
thank God. And to this day, daily, she's like, all right, Lord, I'm this age, I'm getting old. <laughs> Where are my blessings? <laughs> you know, I'm getting old. Where are my grandchildren? Where are my children getting married? You know, all these questions, all these concerns, but God's like, just be patient, just be patient. And I'm telling you, my grandma is, Lord knows her age, but, um, it's never too late. That's what I wanted to say. It's never, there's no age. There's no age gap to God's promises. You could be two months old or you could be 82 and God's faithfulness and God's promises will always occur. They will always happen. It may not happen at your time. It may not happen during your time frame, but it will happen. And who are we? What are we ought to do? We as disciples of Christ, we as followers of Christ, we are ought to trust and believe. But most importantly is to be patient. Be patient. I am personally, I'm not a patient person, but I love my mother and I, le I learned from her how what patience means. Patient is to wait. Patient is to listen. Patient is to say, to, to obey. Patient is to give open arms and say, Lord, I trust. Trust you. I trust. I don't know. Thomas said, "If only I see, I will believe." He said, "If only I touch Jesus. If only I touch your wounds, I'll believe it." But God said, "For those that haven't seen, how much more?" I'm not quoting word for word, but how much more shall they believe? You know. And it's just so astonishing. We as disciples, we as his followers, we haven't, we haven't ultimately seen Christ, but yet we still believe and we know that his promises are unfailing. They are unfailing. They are unfailing. And they will always, always prosper. And as my family, we always like, it's, it's, <laughs> the future is unknown. Tomorrow is unknown. But what do we have? We have today. We have right now. We have this time. And how are we using this time to glorify him? How are you using this time to exalt him? Lord, I don't know about my tomorrow, but I'm gonna still praise you. Lord, I don't know about my future, but I'm gonna still praise you. I'm gonna still trust you. I'm gonna still believe in you and your name because your name is powerful. Your name is good. Your name is gracious. Your name can move mountains. We're, we're, pro, we're proclaiming a beautiful name. My name compared to Jesus, oh, oh, nothing near, nothing near. But his holy name, Jesus, his holy, holy and righteous name, we bow down to, we obey, we follow, we trust and believe. Do we forget the holy name of, do we forget the weight of his name? Did we forget that? The name that we follow, the name that we believe can do so much more than we can think and than we can see, than we can believe. So again, I just wanna bring it back to just I wanna, this is also a message for me. Now, I'm not just sitting, standing here preaching to you all, but this is something that I need to remind myself daily. When we get up, I actually had written notes. <laughs> when we get up every morning, we get up, we get dressed, cleanse our face, maybe make our cup of coffee or cup of tea and go about our day, you know? We praise our Lord. We know we have an agenda every single day. I don't know about you guys, but I know I make a to-do list every single day, you know, like, all right, get this done, check, get that done, go grocery shopping, do this, do that. There's, a, we always have a task that we have to do every single day. We have to, it, at least somewhat, we follow it, you know, we have to get at least two out of five done. And so with that, um, in, in every schedule, in everything that we do, in every in every way that we take action, in every, in every speech that we talk, I want to encourage us to, whatever we do, whatever we say, let it be glorifying. Whether we eat or drink, make it glorifying to our holy God. And just having, being able to exalt him, to praise him, whether we wake up, go to sleep, whether we go about our day, just daily having our thoughts attached on Christ having our actions be like him, having our life look like him. And so I am truly blessed to be here. Thank you once again. And I just, I, I hope and pray that this word has encouraged you. It's, it is quite short and sweet, hopefully. Um, but thank you again. And I just pray that the word of the Lord, again, let me just end it by saying, but the word of the Lord remains forever. God's promises will always remain faithful.
Thank you all. God is awesome. Come on over here, Akuba. It's Campus Ministries tradition to bless our seniors. And so, Mom, Mama, come on up. I'm going to ask you to come lay your hands on. Come over here, Akuba. Thank you. Come on, Pastor G. Right. Invited Pastor Gillespie up. He was one of his, uh, Kuba's counselors at Hope Academy. And when he found out that uh, his students were here, he said, Pastor Babette, you get them in chapel. <laughs> and so I started off by just inviting people to come and sing because she definitely has a beautiful voice and she has a humble, open heart. And so receive this blessing. As you prepare to enter into the next chapter of your journey, we pray God's blessings on Okuba. God bless you to be your true, authentic self always. To be a power and joy filled, anointed follower of Jesus. That God bless you with the gifts and talents to live out your vocation in the world as you complete your time here at Augsburg. Be confident of this. That the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Christ Jesus. Continue to trust in the good news. 
because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Now God fill her with all spiritual wisdom and understanding to live out her faith and service to others that she may be intuitive to the needs of the powerless and that she boldly work for justice, inclusion and equity for all. Lord, she declared, she, she laid claim to the promises of God. And we know that the promises of God are yea and amen. And so now oh God anoint her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Lord, chase and pursue her because she has a deeper calling and the church needs her 21st century leadership. And so Lord, open her up and let her not fear and remind her that you're with her and all your faithfulness is in Jesus name and in the spirit of the Christ we pray. Pastor G. I didn't know I was going to do this, but since she gave me the mic. Yeah. We got one minute. Let's do it like this. We're going to do it like we did at our, at our church. I see you. Point your hands towards her, please, as a point of contact. God, I thank you. Because I've seen this young lady grow from a little girl into a, a, a woman. And I pray that now when she takes this next step as she graduates from college, that you empower and equip her and give her vision to see all the needs and all the strengths and the gifts that you've equipped her with. God, I ask you, as she's been a game changer, that she continues to change the game with her 21st century leadership. Let her not be afraid to be unique. Let her not be afraid to tell the story. Let her speak boldly to your people. God, I thank you. Like it's been said, he who's begun a good work in you is faithful. And even in tough times, let her truly understand that the word that she said today, that your word will stand forever. And as you remember when she stood up here on March 23rd, 2021, and she declared your goodness, and she declared how you have an unchanging hand, that even in the tough times that you bring her through, and let her remain faithful. And God, we thank you for this. In Jesus' name. Amen. So this is oh, this is when we clap and celebrate you. Amen. Uh, go out into the world, share the light and love of Christ with all you encounter. Peace and blessings. Amen. <laughs>